Welcome back, Year 8. A quick little message to say really well done for those that have handed in their homework again on speed. They were looking really, really good, showing that you're understanding the work and again, that the videos are really helping. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at moments. We're going to look at what is actually a turning force and how can you calculate one. Um, we are going to be looking at plugging in some more data into another equation, understanding the equation and actually what a moment is. So what I'd like you to do now is just pause the video and go through the starter questions for me. OK, so what is the name given to the force that causes a boat to float? That would be up thrust. A lot of people in the homework regarding forces, the introduction were saying that up thrust was the force exerted on an object when it was touching the ground, which is incorrect. Up thrust is to do with buoyancy, how something floats, whereas the force that you're thinking about is the contact or normal force that the ground has on that object touching it. What is the unit of speed usually measured in? It's usually measured in for us meters per second, but I will accept meter uh, miles per hour, sorry. What is the equation used to calculate speed? So speed equals distance divided by time. What part of an animal cell does respiration take place in? So this is the mitochondria, as it is spelled, mitochondria, as it is said. What is the definition of a contact force? So a contact force is a force OK, so force that makes contact with an object in order for it to be exerted. Let's move on. What is moment? So moment is the turning effect of a force. Um, a really good example of this is a seesaw. OK, so you have imagine you've got a person sat here and a person sat here. And um, you would obviously expect if they weren't the same mass that one side of the seesaw would go down and one side of the seesaw would go up. So it's this bit here okay, that is the turning effect of the force. You have someone with a mass sat on that seesaw Gravity is going to be affecting that mass. It's going to be acting upon that mass. Therefore, the object is going to have a weight. That weight is the force and it's the force. OK. That causes that turning effect of the seesaw. OK, so let's move on quickly. Um, but for, before I do that, I forgot to mention that the pivot this bit right in the middle is the point at which the object rotates or turns around. So how to work out moment. To work out moment or the turning force, you have to know two different things. You have to know the distance from the pivot to the force being applied in meters and the size of the force itself in newtons. OK, so in terms of what these two things mean, all right, the distance from the pivot to the force is basically the distance from this point here to the centre of the object. OK, so that would be done in 
meters. Okay, and the size of the force would actually be the weight of the object. So it'd actually be represented by an arrow going from the center of the object down. All right, and that would be measured, of course, in Newtons. So let's go through an example. Um, the equation that you need to know to work out the moment is force times distance. Okay, so it's the force of the object times the distance from the pivot, as we discussed before. So I've given you a little example here. You've got the distance from the pivot, okay, um, as five meters on the left and 10 meters on the right. You've got the weight or the force down here as, I'll just get rid of that so you can actually see it, down here is 100 newtons and on this side you've got 50 newtons. So the moment we can calculate on the left hand side and on the right hand side. So this is our left, this is our right. So what this is expecting us to do is plug in the information, plug in the data. So I know that this is my distance and I know that this is my force. OK, so this is my distance and this is my force. So on the left, OK, I can quite easily use this equation here to work out the moment. So moment equals force times distance. My force is 100 newtons on the left times my distance, which is five. That is equal to 500 and the units are newton meters. So 500 newton meters. On the right here, I've got a force of 50 and I've got a distance of 10. 50 times 10 is also 500. So 500 newton meters on the left and the right. They both equal each other, so they would be called balanced. There would be no turning force, okay, because they'd be balanced. So I'll show you this again, slightly bigger this time so that you can see it a bit better. So on the left hand side, you have got moment. equals force times distance. So we don't know our M, okay, but we do know our force and we do know our distance. Again, we know the answer to this is 500, capital N, small m. So our moment is equal to 500 newton meters. On the Right, exactly the same. So we've got moment equals force times distance gives us, we don't know our moment, but we do know our force of 50 and we do know our distance of 10. So our moment is 500 newton meters again. So you would be able to say that this is a balanced seesaw because the turning forces are the same. OK, so I'm going to draw you an example now. So I am going to have my seesaw with my pivot. I'm going to have guy sat here and I'm going to have another one sat here. So the distance from this pivot to this person is going to be five meters 
and this is going to be 10 meters the weight of the person is going to be 200 newtons and the weight of this person is going to be 100 newtons so the first thing we've got to do is write down our equation moment equals force times distance so what we can do here is plug in our data we don't know our moment we do know that our force is 200 and that our distance is five meters so 200 times by five is a thousand newton meters okay on the other side we've got um, no moment we don't know our moment but we do know that we have got our force is a hundred and our distance is 10 so our moment equals a thousand newton meters so again we can say that these are balanced okay so this is an example where everything is balanced all right what we're going to do now is i'm going to show you another um example where you are given the moment for one end but not for the other and you can plug in the data to work out the missing value okay so let's get rid of all of this if it disappears there we go okay so we have got our little seesaw we've got an object on this end and we've got an object on i'm not going to put it there we've got an object here okay so again distance wise from the pivot to the object and then our oh did not mean to do that and then our mass or weight rather because we're looking at a force is this arrow so i said to you that we would be changing up what we're doing this time and we're actually going to be looking for either force or distance and not moment so i'm going to give you that this is going to be two meters and this is going to be 40 newtons okay and i'm going to, I'm going to give you that this is um 60 newtons but we don't know what this is okay so how do we work this out so our left is missing a value but our right isn't we know how to work out the moment on our right we've got all the information we need we've got our force and we've got our distance so the moment on our right hand side is our force times our distance so our moment equals 40 times 2 80 newton meters now this seesaw is balanced okay it's not tilted one way or another so we know that the moment on the left hand side has to equal the same as on the right otherwise they're not balanced 
So we instantly know, okay, if I put the equation down here, so we've got moment equals force times distance. I can instantly tell you that our moment is, a, is definitely going to be 80. And our force is definitely going to be 60. But we still have no idea what our distance is going to be. Now, this is where a triangle can come into play if you like using triangles or simply rearrange the equation. If you want a triangle, OK, you're going to have force down the bottom and distance. And you are going to have moment at the top. So what are we looking for? We're looking for our distance. So we need to cover up our distance. We don't want that. We don't we don't need that right now. So what that's telling us now is that we need to do moment. And remember that line from our speed lesson is divide. So it's moment divided by force. So it is distance equals moment divided by force. So we don't know our distance, but we do know our moment and we do know our force. So we can plug these into a calculator, okay, and you can get your results. So your distance is 1.3 recurring meters. I'll write that a bit clearer. OK. So that's how you'd find that out. It's all about rearranging the equation. OK, so again, your next steps are to answer the question sheet that's attached to the homework on Show My Homework. And then again, upload a picture of your completed work to me on Show My Homework. Good luck.